Hello friends, Tanya here for Spellbinders, and today we're doing three big Father's Day cards. These are all five by seven cards, and we're going to use some new and some old from Spellbinders. We're using the Tile Mosaic 3D embossing folder on this first card, and I took a piece of cardstock that I had used some Nouveau shimmer powder on. I had flooded the page with water and sprinkled on the Storm Cloud, Golden Sparkler, and Violet Brocade Shimmer Powders. I love these. I've had them in my stash for a while, and sometimes you just have to pull out your goodies and play with them. Then I embossed them with this embossing folder, and it is gorgeous, but it needed a little more detail. It was such a busy background, so I added some ink blending with the uh, black soot embossing or distress oxides. Next, we're pulling out the color block landscape from last year. This is a large die of the month kit from last year. And I die cut it with white cardstock. And then I ink blended each of these layers with a different color. I started out with shaded lilac, then dusty concord, seedless preserves, villainous potion, and a villainous potion with black and adhered those to a piece of copy paper. We've got the glimmer burst glimmer foil of the month from I think April and I'm using that with some prism and then I'm using one of the oval dies from the fluted classics ovals just the simple one and I'm creating this beautiful area that's going to house our sentiments which are from the Mary Everything Words dies. These come out this month. It is release day today and there's lots of goodness coming out of this release. Then I take a piece of black cardstock that measures I think it's four and three quarters by seven inches. It's going to cover from top to bottom on this card base, which is a five by seven card base. Just going to line that up so that it has a white portion peeking out on each side. Next, we're going to mat on the piece that we used the tile mosaic on. Now I did trim this down. I was thinking it was going to be a four and a half by six and a half inch piece and I had to trim it down to get the line straight because I did not line this up very well in my embossing folder when I created it. So if you're going to do that, make sure that you line things up carefully with these very geometric styles so that it's nice and straight, unless you're looking for crooked. I did put my Misty on top of this to give it a little extra weight to help it adhere and to cover or to even out the height of our layer here, I'm taking a piece of coaster blank, inking it with the Distress Oxide ink blender. I do have an ink blender for each color. It's just something I chose to do. It took me years to come to that decision, but I don't regret it at all. We're going to take that landscape piece and we're going to lay it over the top of our embossed piece to create this beautiful landscape with a gorgeous night sky. That's what this looks like to me. I just love this. I know, I don't know about you, but I spent a lot of time camping with my fa family as a child and I really enjoyed it. There's some of my best memories with my parents are camping. And I really wanted to pull that feeling into this card. That's one of the things that I like to celebrate with my dad. The fact that he taught me all of these wonderful things to do with the outdoors and how to camp comfortably and quickly and inexpensively. And just the joys of exploring even your local area, going to your local campgrounds, local meaning within your state within a couple hours. You don't have to go very far to enjoy a good vacation. I'm taking each of these sentiments and carefully adhering them to this background. I did die cut them from some silver mirror cardstock, which you can get in the Spellbinder shop. It's gorgeous. It's super pliable. Love it. It adds all the dimension you don't you need. You, I never layer these because they are so gorgeous on their own. Next, I'm taking the precision layering A2 size, and this is the A, and I just took one of the larger ones and die cut a mask. Now, you could have done this, uh, it could be done a whole lot easier with some 
masking paper. If you die cut all of these pieces from some masking paper, you wouldn't have to be so fiddly. I chose to do this the hardest way possible, apparently, <laughs> but it does work. I did only get ink in the wrong spot in one spot, and it doesn't affect things overall. I'm just taking each of these pieces, puzzling them in to create um, mask for each area and I'm ink blending them with the same colors that I did on the front. I want them to be soft and subtle and just to carry the design through to the inside of the card. Now the big rectangular mask helps keep this all just in one area on the inside of the card. And I do end up pulling in the negative piece from die cutting this these white sections to add color to that very top layer. Instead of adding black soot with the Villainous Potion on this darkest piece, I use the Hickory Smoke. I didn't want it as dark and black soot is going to instantly make it very dark. Now the big reveal, I'll pull off pull off the masking tape and there we have our landscape. It looks a little smudgy here, but in the long run, it looks fantastic. Now I'm pulling one of my older stamp sets. This is from Paper Tray Ink. It's called Father Knows Best. It has lots of great inspiring uh, sentiments for the insides of cards. These are all geared towards someone that you look up to, someone that's helped you in, in growing up or mentoring you in a job or a difficult part of your life. It doesn't have to be a, a man, but it works great for Father's Day. Then I wanted to pull in some star embellishments. So I pulled out the glowing sky embellishments from Trinity Stamps. They have two sizes of stars in there. And that was card number one. Card number two is Leafy Sprig themed, well actually, we're using Leafy Sprig, which is part of the new release, and a piece of watercolor paper that I've used the Golden Sparkler Shimmer Powder with, and we're die cutting two of the large sprigs from that. Next, I have a four and a half by six and a half piece of white cardstock that I am going to ink blend with Pumice Stone Distress Oxide ink. It's a great neutral gray and it's light. It works with warm and cool tones, which is it, like, it's the most perfect gray. You can make it darker by ink blending heavier or just going kind of light. And I did leave um, the upper portion a bit lighter. Next, I'm taking some of the Glimmer ink from Hero Arts in gold, and I'm spattering the background. I wanted to pull that in. We're going to use a scrap of that tile mosaic piece from the first card on this card. I do use my Misty again as a heavyweight block. Next, we are going to pull in the um, Happy Parents Day Glimmer and Die set. It has Happy Father's Day and a banner die that cuts it out. And we're also using the banner die from the Mary Everything Words die set. And we're going to use that to create a framework or a highlight spot for our main sentiment, which is Glimmer Hot Foiled with the gold foil on black cardstock. This is the Spellbinders cardstock because I've had the best luck with Glimmer Hot Foiling on their colored cardstock. Just going to center that on our banner and then use a T-square ruler to make sure it's all nicely lined up. I do want to make sure that this is a very, since this has a lot of geometric components to it, I want to make sure everything is well aligned. And I want to cover one end of that banner with our piece that's left over from that tile mosaic piece from the previous card. All of these cards are going to kind of build on each other. There will be components that we carry from one card to the next. Sometimes when you're creating, it's nice to make things in a set. They don't have to all be the same design. They don't even have to be the same color scheme. Although when I do a video, I try to make things fairly color coordinated. I feel like it just makes the video look better if my things are color coordinated at least coordinate in the same um, color range they don't have to be exactly the same color next we're taking our sprigs and we're going to adhere those down i did add a little bit of glue to a, a few of the 
the leaves and then a line of light line of glue down the stem. I just adore the color mix on these golden leaves. They don't have to look fall-ish. I think they just like look like golden laurels. You know, the uh, way that the ancient Romans um, symbolized honoring someone. That was my feeling here. And I'm adding a scattering of the individual leaves that come in this die set also. These in individual leaf dies each match one on the sprig so that if you wanted to make different colored leaves you could easily do that and make and layer them on top of the sprig that adds a little extra dimension too and the die cuts actually cut the stem veins in or the excuse me the leaf veining into them and that creates some dimension all by itself Next, we're pulling in the peach opalescent sequins. These just came out. There's several different colors and they're gorgeous. They aren't just one color with that opalescent. They will match lots of things on either side of that peach color, yellow, red, orange. They um, will have a little bit of a ch color changing quality to them. And I think they are just perfect. They're a nice, lightweight, easy to apply uh, embellishment. And don't let yourself think that men don't like shimmer. Have you ever seen the paint jobs on their toys, their boats, their RV, or excuse me, not RVs, their trucks, their ATVs, all of it has super sparkly things. So yes, they like sparkles too. We're going to add a few more leaves on the inside of this card to frame up the sentiment which is again from that paper tray ink sentiment set the father's knows best father knows best and go through your stash use what you have just because it's not brand new doesn't mean you can't use it and i think we need to be a little better about using what's in our stash to combine it with the new things that we add i love to combine things i'm going to try to do that more and that is card number two. Card number three is going to use the Let's Dance uh, die set to make this mug. And we're pulling in that golden sparkler watercolor paper to cut the beer out. I thought it was a perfect color for the beer. And we cut the base from vellum. Next, we're going to take some sentiments from the We Dance Glimmer Sentiments. And I am going to use that label die to cut out Best Dad. I also glimmered the I'll Drink to that. And then used the Precision Layering Mini Slimline B set. I took the smallest die from that. And die cut my sentiment with that. It doesn't have a coordinating die, but dig through your stash. You might have something that works perfect. Especially with these layering type dies. Now we're going to adhere the beer to that vellum die cut glass. And I did refer to the fallout piece or the negative piece to make sure I'm going to align, align these correctly. The top of these pieces is totally flat. The bottom has a rounded curve that helps you figure that out. And then you can look at that at the uh, negative piece to see which way those little notched pieces go. It actually goes together quite easily, and I really like how this mug turned out. I think this is going to be a go-to anytime I want to use a beverage-themed card. There are so many fellas in our families. Actually, I know a lot of women who enjoy craft beers, and this is a perfect way to create a card for them. And especially if you're going to give them a gift card to their favorite bar, their favorite craft brewery, their favorite liquor store, this would be a perfect way to do that. I am adding a little dimension to this. I want to add, I added dimension to the small piece of the foam and the foam is die cut from some shimmery white cardstock. I thought that was perfect for that foam. And I add a little bit of dimension with some scrap cardstock behind the larger piece of the foam also. Now vellum tends to curl with liquid car, uh, glue so I did make sure to put a heavyweight block on that. Now we're using the origami folds embossing folder and I'm making sure to line up this shimmery gold cardstock panel 
with the design so that it's not wonky. I love this design. I had chosen it for the roundedness, but it's kind of got a Celtic feel. Next, we're pulling out the Glimmer Burst Glimmer Foil Kit. Again, I love this foil kit. I use it all the time. It's so perfect. We're going to use the hinge method to foil onto this large piece of cardstock. This is much larger than we're ultimately going to use. It's a little bigger than a half sheet of cardstock. I am going to flip that over and line up my foil plate to complete a full panel. It's actually going to get cut down to probably um, three inches by five inches, I think is what it ultimate gets, ultimately gets cut down to because I want to make sure that lots of that um, embossed shimmer cold cardstock shows. Here we've got it trimmed down. We're going to adhere our embossed piece. And I do make sure I put a lot of, well, not a lot of glue, but I cover large areas of this panel with the glue so that it will be sure to adhere. Now, when you die cut and then emboss some of these pieces, you will find that you have some uneven shrinkage. And this one shrunk more from top to bottom than it did from side to side. And I'll fix that by just trimming a little bit off of the top and bottom of my card base when it's all done. I'm going to add some scraps of cardstock behind this uh, glimmer foiled panel. I wanted a little extra height on this and I'll add that to my card base. Just going to add some glue behind that and use the Misty again to add a little extra weight so it will adhere well. We're going to pull out the glimmer set again and die cut the sun shape and the circle. The circle is die cut out of some plain white cardstock and the sun is from some shimmery gold cardstock. I need to add that label to the front of that cup and then we will start adhering things together. I do decide I need a little bit of color behind that mug so I took my yellow blending brush and I just add a little bit of yellow in the middle of that whatever yellow was left on my brush. Now what's we're going to adhere the circle directly to the gold shimmer uh, paper and then we're going to add a little bit of dimension behind that sun shape with some uh, with a scrap of cardstock. I'm just going to cut a square and then trim off. Oh no, that's not cardstock. That's coaster blank. I guess I wanted a little extra dimension. Just going to trim the corners off of the square so that nothing sticks out behind our die. Then we'll center that right in the middle of that glimmer burst and we'll take our Stein, which I've added a little bit of extra weight or excuse me, height behind with scraps of cardstock die cut with the same dies and adhered behind it and coaster blank behind our sentiment to make it the same height as our main featured element and adhere that to the front, making sure that's nice and straight. Here comes the T roller again. I've been using that a lot lately. I'm finding that I just want to double check my by lining up. The We Dance, We All Dance Sentiments comes in a glimmer and a stamp set. So if you don't glimmer, you can get the stamp set. If you want both, you can get both. And clearly, I wanted both. Sometimes you just want more options. I'm stamping that inside the card with some VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, which is my favorite for black sentiments. And then the last piece, we're going to add some of those pearl opalescent color essential sequins. There are, I think, six colors of these color essential sequins, and they have this beautiful iridescent quality to them. And I'm going to add, or add a scattering above and below our main sentiment. I love how these kinds of embellishments really carry your eye across the card. And that is my third card. That's all three cards. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to leave me a comment, I would love to hear which of these cards you like the most. Hey, did you notice those are glow-in-the-dark stars? If you 
would like to see more of a particular technique, I'd love to hear that. And if you aren't subscribed to this channel, now would be a perfect time. If you're interested in any of the products I use today, they will be in a list in the description box below. And there are a couple of videos here I thought you might enjoy. Until next time, bye-bye.